The Knickerbockers returned home from their West Coast trip and continued their solid play on Saturday afternoon. New York knocked off the West leading Nuggets at MSG for their third straight win. So let's talk some Knicks hoops with one of the co-hosts for Knicks Fan TV, the one and only J.D. J.D., how you doing, man? Thank you for having me on, Dexter. Good times to be on. Good, I know. Good times, good vibes to be on. Not talking to you during the losing streak. Knicks winning again. This is pretty good. And J.D. against Denver. We witnessed the return of Jalen Brunson, who had missed five out of the last six games with a sore foot, and he dropped 24 points and five dimes. How impressed were you with the performance of the Knicks point guard? Oh, he was very, very impressive. And, you know, Dexter, now on Knicks Red TV, we're getting a little bit plugged in. We're not Ian Bagley yet, but we're getting a little plugged in. And I had heard that there was a real possibility that he was going to come back on Saturday's game. And quite frankly, I, I didn't know about that. You know, it's a one o'clock game. I, I thought maybe, you know, a foot injury. You want him to come back on a night game. Just, you know, not alter the consistency of these guys' routine. They're just used to playing games at seven o'clock. And he, you know, he came back and did not miss a beat, you know, uh, scoring 16 points in the first quarter, six of eight. I like the mentality he came in with. The explosiveness looked like it was there. He played nine straight minutes to start the game. And you saw the impact he had on the team. You saw the impact that he had on Julius Randle uh, throughout the game, especially there to close out in the fourth quarter. So Jalen Brunson came back and he showed you, you know, his all-star capabilities and his impact on the team. So to me, he was extremely impressive, and you saw different ways in which he was missed. It absolutely was impressive in Saturday's win. And speaking of that win, J.D., that was the Knicks' 42nd win of the season. That guarantees just their second winning record in the last 10 years. So it looks like the team is going to make the playoffs for the second time in three years here, J.D. So the question for me is, has the Knicks franchise truly changed its culture, and is it sustainable? I believe they have changed their culture. Uh, and I believe they're, they have all the footprints for it to be sustainable. And when you look at their draft picks, that Dallas Mavericks pick this year, looks like it's going to be a valuable pick. Who, let's see what the Wizards do in the play-in. If they get in, they could potentially have two picks in the first round this year. Uh, they have, you know, good value contract, that Jalen Brunson contract. It looks like he's getting underpaid and is going to be descending. Randall's contract looks good. Uh, they have a ton of young players, one of the youngest teams in the the league and most of all Dexter culture in the end is about winning right you can set up the culture in the locker room off the court uh, in the arena um, strategy in games but at the end you have to top it off with winning games and the Knicks are doing that and they look to be you know setting up a, a, a situation to where it's going to be sustainable because their best players are right in their prime and then their second layer of players are growing into themselves and developing so I think it's sustainable and the most encouraging thing about all this is the fans look to be excited. You saw the game yesterday, a one o'clock game, and you saw the energy in the arena. So all around from the fans to the front office, to the head coach and to the players, this looks like everyone is uniting and, and the team looks to be, you know, building himself into a potential contender for years to come. That is the hope for Knicks fans that they are building themselves into a potential contender as we move forward. And so moving forward, looking ahead, for three games with the Knicks this week, they're at home for the T-Wolves. Then a Florida trip, they go to battle the Heat and the Magic consecutively. The team has won three straight games. So what are you looking for the Knicks to accomplish over these next three contests? Well, I'm looking for them to accomplish two things. I, I, I want them to have a sweep. I want them to win all three games. You know, they're 7-1 and one in the last eight uh, home games. And so they've been able now to protect home court. As I mentioned, they're rallying behind the crowd uh, of the New York Knicks. And also, you know, Dexter, a little bit of concern of mine is over the last six games, the Knicks have only crossed the 30% mark at the three-point line only once, and that was against the Portland Trailblazers, where they shot just shy of 43%. In the end, we're heading, we're, we're at the stretch run, and in the playoffs, in this new NBA now, you have to hit the three to win. They figured out a way to win yesterday as a top team without shooting the three, where they shot 28%. But grand scheme of things, in today's NBA, to win a, a playoff series, you're going to have to hit the three-point line. Again, 29% over the last six games. I'm looking for them to start to improve there because you're going to need that come playoff time.
All right, something to keep your eye on that three-point shooting percentage with the Knicks as they move forward. That is the great J.D. representing East Harlem, as always, from Knicks Fan TV. J.D., always good to talk to you. We will talk some more soon, man. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Dexter, and let's go Knicks. Let's go Knicks.